What's up folks, today we're going to be taking a look at Destroy All Humans. Now whether you're familiar with this over the top cheese fest or not, it's going to be a new adventure to all. Now was this remaster handled with care? Should we re-experience the adventure from 2005? I'm about to tell you, but should you subscribe? Yes you should. So if you enjoy this video, why not subscribe? And as usual, if you would prefer an audio only version, the link is down below. Now before I get started, I don't know what you guys did when I reviewed Ghost of Tsushima and Carrion, but I got told by a lot of people that I was featured in some group chats and some discords. That shit helped out a lot. So please continue to do what you do, and I appreciate every single one of y'all. For a chance to win a copy of Destroy All Humans on any system, comment below and I will reach out to the winner in a week's time. That's seven days. Is Destroy All Humans worth $40 on console or $30 on PC? Well, I'm about to tell you. My name is Tanner and this is For Your Money, a different kind of review. Destroy Humans takes the idea of the 1947 Roswell crash and amps it up for one hell of a cheesy story. Destroy Humans sees you in control of Crypto-137, who has been sent to Earth to find out what happened to Crypto-136 after his crash, as well as harvest human DNA, which contains furon DNA that the furon stored in humans during the ancient times. If Crypto-137 fails his mission, the entire furon empire will be doomed to extinction. What is Crypto's worry? Majestic. This world's FBI equivalent is no joke and will try their damned hardest to achieve their goals, mind control, super weapons, and much more. You can tell this is a neat little story, but it's also entangled in 1950s propaganda about communism. They say you're a communist spy that is causing destruction and turning everyone against each other. I mean, it's also in a way making fun of how stupid those people were back in the day. A whole fair gets destroyed by a UFO with a death ray and people believe it's just communists doing what they do best, trying to ruin the good old America. I mean, it's a goofy story full of references and in no way should be taken seriously. Still to this day though, I had a blast experiencing this game once again. Gameplay next. Destroy Humans is and isn't what it sounds like. Sure, you're going to have missions where you go destroy tons of humans to prove your hate towards their species, but you're also going to have tons of stealth missions that involve you cloaking and sneaking past feds and all that jazz. This is a rather structured game. I mean, you'll have areas you can explore, but they aren't huge and you're really there for challenges like destroying buildings, abducting stuff, things along those lines. Now, you'll do this to earn DNA so you can upgrade crypto and your saucer. Do you have to do these to get your upgrades? No, but if you want every upgrade in the game, then yeah, you're going to have to do a couple of these challenges. Other than that, you'll be doing the main storyline. The missions are very fun and they differ in how they're handled, which is great, especially for a 15 year old game. We've had a lot of titles come out between 2005 and 2020, so it's nice to see that a game that old can come back years later and still have a good structure to it. Can it seem a bit slow at times? Yes, but it still has that magic touch we experienced back in 2005. As for the combat, you do have a good bit of options here. The weapons you have are the Zapomatic Anal Probe, Disintegrator Ray, and the Ion Detonator. Each are good in their own ways. For example, the Zapomatic is good for killing multiple enemies at once, and the Anal Probe is good for harvesting human brains. Of course, the weapons aren't equal in damage done because the Ion Detonator will destroy anything with just about one bomb, and the Disintegrator Ray is good for just pure fun and devastation. The weapon choice is, well, your choice, and which one you use, each will get the job done, but they all have their pros and cons. Now, still to this day, I love the weapons, each very different and offer a fun way to kill humans and their machines. Honestly, these are the weapons I would imagine aliens would have if they invaded the world today. Along with these, you'll have abilities like PK. This is your telekinetic powers that let you lift things with that giant alien head of cryptos. You can throw enemies, cars, I mean, you can really just throw about anything that isn't bolted down. You can also explode things with your mind, have people follow you, or have them do stuff that is mission specific. And along with that, you can also read people's minds. Now, some of these thoughts in their heads are baffling. They'll make you raise an eyebrow, laugh, or just make you want to destroy them in their tracks. You can read minds for the hell of it, but the main reasons are to gather information regarding your current mission, and two, it will replenish the hollow bob, which is your human disguise so you can sneak around the maps. What would an alien invasion game be if you didn't have a UFO? Well, not an alien invasion game, that's for sure. The saucer is a weapon of mass destruction and sometimes infuriation. The saucer is equipped with the death ray, sonic boom, and a quantum devastator. 
Each will demolish anything they touch, leaving a trail of devastation and rubble. The infuriation comes in with the angle of the camera while flying. It's going to take some getting used to, and it was a complaint for me back in the day, and it's still one today, but I'm not going to make a big deal and take off points. You just get used to it. Overall, the gameplay for Destroy Humans, yes, is very simple, but offers tons of fun and goofy moments. In a remaster, we always, even if you don't know it, look at the design above everything else. How are the graphics? Is it a poor or a true remaster slash remake? Well, it's obvious, and it was obvious from day one, it's a full top to bottom remaster that looks exceptional. The colors are extremely vivid, but nothing overwhelming. The graphics are quite stunning. Of course, it doesn't look like real life, but that's the cartoony aspect of this game, and it fits. Character design was handled very well from the pulsating things on Crypto's head and lights inside of his head. Then we go to an over-exaggerated southern farmer look and they did a great job. Because trust me, I see those farmers every day. Now here's my biggest issue with the game. Audio. I talked to a few people and it was split on who noticed it and who didn't. Or who experienced it and who didn't. So I'm strictly speaking from experience. I mean, I always do, but I just need that to be noted right now. My audio in this game for cutscenes sounded like absolute shit. It honestly sounded like somebody applied too much noise reduction, as well as you'd also have buzzing moments. Now, could it have been my headset? No, I tried my headset, my monitor speaker, my TV speakers, and a Bluetooth speaker. Then I looked over at my recording and I saw my Elgato was picking it up in the audio section, meaning, what I was hearing was 110% in my game, and it was none of my hardware. So, without further ado, here are some clips of the overall design. Go to hell, Klaatu. You think I'm scared of a three-foot space hamster? I think you should be. Ugh. Now, we can do this easy, or we can do it hard. Your choice. What do you know about a down Furon scout ship? A what? Sorry, let me put it in baby talk. A flying saucer crashed somewhere or uh, captured. Don't worry, Pox. I wiped out all the smart monkeys in the last attack. All they got left are a couple of hairy knuckled alpha males who don't know thing one about intergalactic warfare. I mean, come on. Any planet without orbital ion cannons is just asking for it. A lot of grunts are on lately. Couldn't be commies in Uniontown. Or could they? <laughs> oh, God. This is not standard operating procedure. Nobody... <laughs> Destroy Humans is worth $35 out of $40, so if you are on PC, then you're getting a hell of a deal. This is a great remaster, and it's clear the team knew what the fans wanted coming back. Over-the-top, dumb fun, and graphics that show love for one of our cult favorites. But the audio is not an issue I can't overlook. It honestly is annoying as fuck. I'm sure it can be fixed with an update sometime later down the road, but either way, if you're looking for a fun title, you should check this one out, especially if you've never played Destroy All Humans. As usual, this was a phenomenal game and experience. Well, that is all I got, folks, so if you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe? And if you did not like it, hit that thumbs down. Till next time, fellas.